Hey, what is up guys? My name is Harrison Barron from Growth Generators. Now in this video, I'm going to show you not only what you need to do to be productive as far as your SEO goes, and there's a lot more that you can do as far as SEO, but also how to index your website on Google and make sure your website is indexed on Google. And then along with that, some follow-up that you need to do to make sure that you have the best results possible when it comes to SEO, getting found on Google, and ultimately getting those pages discovered that you may have just created or anything like that. So stay tuned, I'm excited to share this with you. This is gonna be a bit of a longer video, so stay tuned and follow along. If this is something that you need to do for any of your websites, I'd love to help. If you have any comments or questions at all, either leave a comment down below or visit our website down below and ask us a question. We'd be happy to help you in that regard. It is a little complex. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you guys in the video and I hope you guys find this information extremely valuable. Alrighty, so we are at my computer here and now this is gonna be uh, a bit of an SEO guide as well as how to index your website because they do go hand in hand. So essentially you're gonna come to your my websites page, right? And we're a legend partner, so we have a bunch of websites in here. You may not have that many. By all means, if you're building websites for somebody else, keep going. If you're not, uh, don't expect to have all of these. Just know that you you're gonna have significantly fewer. Uh, I've already preloaded everything so uh, in the effort to save time so that way we don't have to wait on Wix loading. But essentially we're going to need to go into select site and we're going to need to go to edit. So I have select site here and I have edit over here. And essentially what we're going to need to do is the first thing you have to do before indexing a site, you don't want to index a website before the SEO is actually done. So the first thing we need to do is the SEO. Now if you're new to Wix and you haven't um, or you're new to SEO and you really don't know how to do SEO, Definitely go through their SEO tools. They are actually pretty good. And you're gonna go get found on Google, right? You're gonna follow their whole plan. Now, if you have a lot of experience in SEO, which we happen to have here, um, I definitely recommend you don't need to, or I should say, I don't recommend, but you don't need to follow it specifically. And this is gonna be um, kind of the, the way to get your website indexed without following it exactly. Um, now, it will always bark at you, so sometimes we will just make Wix happy and then we'll go make the changes afterwards, um, but it really is totally up to you. Your sitemap is going to be really important. Your robot.txt files is typically for more advanced type stuff if you're looking to crawl sites and things like that. Your website verification, which we will cover your SEO patterns and things like that, and your URL redirect manager if you're moving domains. But either way, if you're new to SEO, definitely go through the Get Found on Google. They really lay it out as simple as possible. Now, if you're, like I said, you're experienced or you just want to learn the SEO part, this is for you. So you want to go on your website and you're going to go to your menus and pages. From here, you're going to hit your home and then you're going to hit your settings and you're going to see all of this kind of stuff. So this is exactly what your, your search is going to look like in Google when somebody's typing in what Google thinks you might be the best fit for. So for this, heal your low back pain with yoga therapy. Right, we've already done that. We've followed Wix's guidelines and that kind of stuff. You're gonna make sure your slug is correct, and then you're also gonna make sure your title tag is all done correctly here. Um, it'll tell you, you know, this is what people see. Um, they give you the little lines and things like that, and then also what your page is about. Now they recommend 50 to 300 characters. Uh, typically, at my agency, we really don't recommend that. We really recommend between 50 and 170 characters, um, depending on the size of the characters, meaning the actual physical size. You only get about 166 on average characters on um, the actual screen when somebody's searching it. Anything after that is going to get cut off. So the first hundred and I would say 50 are probably the most important in whatever page you're making. So really take time to craft that. I understand that if you're going through the SEO uh, tools with Wix, you will need to um, kind of meet the requirements and what they say and putting in keywords in certain areas. But if you're not doing that, keep in mind, you know, the 150 to 170 is really the sweet spot. Uh, some will argue 160 is really the sweet spot, um, but really around the 150 to 170 mark is, is really where it matters. Then you're gonna go into your advanced SEO. You're gonna go get your structured data. Um, there's plenty of websites, there's plenty of resources out there. I'm not gonna go through structured data and how to do it, but essentially it's just code. Um, Go get it, go build it out yourself. Um, there's there's basically generators out there. There's some Wix stuff on there on how to go get your structured data. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna be teaching this. Just know that it's there. Is it really gonna help you? It will. Is it you know a tremendous impact? Uh, we haven't seen uh, any crazy, crazy impact from doing structured data, but it is a good thing to have and anything that is gonna help you get seen on Google is important. Uh, your conical, basically where the original content is taking place, which is on Krista Quinn Yoga for this example. Um, site name, move to heal, website, right, is the type, and then your URL is actually kristaquinnyoga.com. 
Uh, and then you have your custom meta tags. This is really, really important. Now, don't try to stretch this. If you have meta tags or if you have tags and you really think that only three to five fit, use those three to five. If you have, you know, 20 of them, drop it down to 10. But there should be between five and 10 really core things that your website is going to focus on. Um, you know, my personal website, HarrisonBarrett.com, I focus on LinkedIn, uh, growth generators, my, my uh, main business, we're focusing on SEO, content creation, um, and things like that. So will we be able to get 10? Sure. Can we, could we stretch it to 20? Of course, but it doesn't make sense for us to do that. You know, between five and 10 is really a good amount. If you have one to three, I really would try to add a couple more. Um, you know, maybe it's a like keyword. So if you're talking about social media, maybe it's Instagram, maybe it's YouTube. Um, Maybe it's Clubhouse, the new app that everybody's talking about. Whatever those are, just use those meta tags that, that may relate to um, your industry and things like that. Now, essentially, when you have all this kind of stuff done, you're going to go up here and publish this. This will now basically let Google know and prefabricate your sitemap and all the really important stuff for your website. Now, from here, you're going to start to work on your indexing of your website. So we have to go to Google Search Console. From here, you're gonna go up in the top left. You're gonna be able to click add property and you're actually gonna type in the root domain. So it's not the actual domain. It is the act, It is um, the root domain. So you don't need the HTTPS. You don't need, um, whoops. You don't need any of that stuff before or after. You just need kristaquinyoga.com or whatever it is. Don't put, you know, www dot or anything like that. It doesn't matter. And then from there, you're gonna hit continue. Now, right here is when it's gonna throw an error. It's gonna say, hey, you need to verify your ownership. So whatever that is, so I'm just gonna grab a random website on the internet just to show you guys. If I go to godaddy.com, right, it's gonna say verify ownership. Obviously, I don't own GoDaddy, but this is the screen that you're gonna see. Now, you would take this code, you'd copy it, right? It's gonna walk you through it, um, DNS, uh, provider, whomever you use, obviously most of us are probably using Wix for this, but essentially you're going to copy this code and you're going to come over to their website and the domain section of your website. You go up here, you grab the domain, and then you're going to be able to go in here and then you're going to be able to edit and manage your DNS records. Assuming your DNS records are set up correctly, you'll have to point the domain first. That is incredibly important. From there, you're going to go down to your text records. You're going to hit add record and you're going to copy and paste this code right into here. From there, you're going to just hit save. Obviously, for the sake of this example, I'm not GoDaddy. This is going to mess it up, so I'm not going to save it. But we've already done this. That's what it looks like, right? We hit save. And then within, I would say, between five minutes and about and typically about an hour, it should populate and let Google know, hey, this is verified, right? And then you can hit verify and it'll basically say that you own that property. So we'll go back. We'll just prove that, you know, we basically own that property and it's verified. Whoops. We have to go up here at property, right? It's not going to allow it to accept with HTTPS or www dot um, hit continue, right? Ownership auto verified. Wow, it's phenomenal. It's because we put the right code in the right place. We basically showed Google, hey, you know what? We are the right people for this. Now, the cool part is we're going to be able to go to the property. Now, we just submitted this sitemap um, into Google, so don't expect to see anything crazy on here. Uh, and when I say adjust, I mean within the last couple days. What you're going to do from that now is you're going to go to your sitemap and what you have to do is you have to submit your sitemap and I specifically didn't do this because I wanted to show you guys what you have to do. So crystalquinyoga.com forward slash sitemap dot XML. Now, when, if you remember back in here, right, you can do your sitemaps and this is basically what it's going to say. It's going to say your sitemap. It's going to bring you there. Uh, I just know that the, uh, the slug, it's much easier to remember. You're going to copy all these. You're going to go over your sitemap and you're going to paste this in here. Now you're going to hit submit. It's going to take a minute. It'll say perfect sitemap submitted successfully. Google periodically process and look for changes. So every time you make a change, your sitemap is going to get updated from here. It's going to say got it right. It says discovered URLs zero. It's still going to populate uh, just because it says it's red, right? It's submitted today um, last read on the 12th. So it means it has to read again uh, where it'll discover all the URLs. And that'll give you the performance that is literally indexing your website on Google. Um, we're not going to be covering removals, but it's pretty much the same process. You go in here, you can hit new request and you remove those. But essentially, this is what you're going to do, especially if you have a Wix website. It is literally that easy. From there, you want to check back in on it in a couple days. Typically, it takes about 24 to 48 hours to populate data. 
And really, your your best data is going to come after about 30 days, I would say, to sit, to make an educated decision. So after that, you're going to be able to have a website. Let me find a Wix website that we are currently working on here um, for SEO purposes. So you'll be able to have a website, and in theory, you'll be able to read this data. Now, I'm not going to be covering all this data and what it looks like, but essentially you're going to, from submitting it, don't expect a ton of clicks right away. You're not going to get a ton of clicks right away. It takes a long time. It takes, uh, you know, constantly building, adding blogs, building content and things like that. But assuming things are done correctly, um, in, in the digital marketing world or, or the SEO world, this is called the Google Sandbox. Uh, typically lasts between two months and about six months, sometimes a little longer depending on the website and the niche that it's in. After that, you'll start to see a takeoff. So you start, you'll see this takeoff right here. This means Google's starting to index it. You'll be able to see your impressions and things like that. Now, if it's been six or nine months and you're not seeing results and you have a website that's done correctly, you've put content in there and things like that, make sure you go check your coverage. That's why I wanted to bring this up. There's 12 valid and 12 excluded, right? Discovered, currently not indexed. Crawled, currently not indexed. Uh, Page with redirect, not found, whatever it may be, right? There's there's a million different things submitted and indexed, right? But essentially, there's 12 pages currently that are valid and 21 excluded. Now, I can go back and do the investigation on that, but essentially, that's me knowing, hey, you know, I've consistently added pages to it. Um, if you're not seeing that, you need to go back and check your steps. Make sure your sitemap is correct, right? Last right on the 6th, currently it's the 15th. So that means it hasn't been read in a little while. We've added some stuff. If you've added a bunch of blogs to your website, you're going to basically copy your sitemap. You're going to go down here. You'll enter the sitemap again and basically let Google know, hey, Google, you know what? We wrote a bunch of content. This is a terrible time only because we, Google just came out with a massive core algorithm. That's why you see this nice little drop in here at the six month mark. Um, but on December 4th, so it negatively impacted them, but now they're back on their way up. Um, but that's how you're going to be able to check it. You can go into your core web vitals, try page speeds, mobility usage. It'll give you errors, right? And valid pages versus non-valid pages. Um, but essentially, you really just want to look for that performance, see what's going on, your sitemaps. If you're seeing things that aren't being indexed, right? See index coverage. You'll be able to go through. It's exactly how we got to it before and valid versus excluded pages. Uh, just because they're excluded doesn't mean Google's not looking at them. Uh, I've had plenty of pages that Google's looked at, discovered, currently not indexed. That just means either they're too new, uh, Google might not trust them yet, there's a variety of different reasons in there. But essentially that's how you know if your website's being indexed and how many pages are actually being indexed. From there, it's just a waiting game. Producing content is extremely important on a regular basis over and over and over again. Um, but you know, and then once you're in here, if you're sharing this with a client, you can go in here, you can add um, somebody to it, right? You can just use your settings, you can go in there and add somebody. But essentially, this is the whole process that you need to follow to get your site indexed. And then after, like I said, after about a month, you'll be able to really get a good feel for it. Give it 24 to 48 hours after you submit it for indexing, especially right now, it might even be a couple days longer because Google is backed up after the core algorithm update. This video is on 115. So if you are doing it afterwards or anything like that, you know, in two, three, four months, chances are pretty good you don't have to worry about it. But if you're watching this video and implementing it right after, I highly, highly, highly recommend just relax. Google's gonna get there, I promise. Um, and keep an eye on it. Pop in once a month and see how things are going and constantly work on improving your website. Blogs are a great way, you know, content is a great way. If you guys are curious to know more, you know, either check out my either check out this channel, uh, my personal channel, The Millennial Entrepreneur, Harris Barron, or uh, visit our website, growth-generators.com. We have tons of content, how to get found, you know, different things, and, and ultimately just really how to grow your online presence. Hope this video helps. I'll see you guys over on my camera right now. Alrighty, guys, that is it. I hope that was kind of simple. I did my best to absolutely break it down uh, in a step-by-step -step process of what we do here and how we're getting websites ranked and indexed on Google. So if you found value in this, please leave us a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you never miss another opportunity to grow your business and ultimately grow your Wix website. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Stay tuned. We have a bunch of new content coming out, everything from how to build an e-commerce store, different tips and tricks on Wix, how to grow your business, SEO, a whole bunch of stuff. So please stay tuned. We're excited to see you guys over there. And other than that, have a fantastic rest of your day. See you guys later. Bye.